Wallpaper can be tough to work with if you're not experienced with it. I had a great question about a new peel and stick wallpaper that you can get online. Here are my tips on how to install it. Now it's time for the neighborhood connection. We had a great question come in about wallpaper, and it's so much easier to do now than ever before. There are so many different options out there, but just remember you get what you pay for. The super inexpensive stuff doesn't stick very well. So I found this stuff on Amazon, and I'm going to show you how to put it in today because it is a peel and stick wallpaper. No glue, no water, none of that mess. And the cool thing is when you want to change it up, you can do it because you just have to peel it back off and put the new stuff up. So I'm going to put it on this wall right here, and I'm going to show you how. All right, the secret of this stuff is just take your time and work from the top down. I'm going to work on this square edge here and come in from there. So that gives me the best chance to kind of get that lined up on the edge because I know that is straight. So I'm going to start out by peeling this back, getting our paper back here. Gently pull that back. So we're going to come up here now. This is where we're going to start up here. I'm going to get this far corner right where I want it. going across the top like that and use that edge and then we're going to come down here and start working our way down and the cool thing with this is you can kind of reposition it and get it just exactly where you want it just have to start out and really get it to the corner we can always take it and trim it if we have to Let that be the guide. We just don't want to have any bubbles in here. And we're just going to keep working our way down. Get a bubble like that. Just come in, pull it back. Just take your time. Get a little overhang there, it's okay, because we can trim that back with the razor blade when we're done. I'm going to keep nice downward pressure on it. All right, I'm going to make this a little easier. I'm going to come down here below my base trim and just give myself a nice rough cut. And I like these single edge blades for this. i just get this out of the way for now. So now I can come down here and pull the rest of this backing paper off. We're not chasing that around. Give us a good chance to come in here now where we can keep working this down. Now this is that time that we want to go through and take a look and make sure we don't have any bubbles or anything like that, that we're really happy with the way this is laying. I don't have much of a gap here. There's a little bit. That's just from the wall being out of square. That's pretty typical. So at this point then, I'm going to come across here and I'm going to grab a putty knife that I have right here. And then I'm going to push this right into the corner here and use that to run my razor blade across. Uh, what I could do with this peel and stick is come in here like this and then bring that right up to the edge and then push that down. So that way we can get that just a butt seam right up against each other there. So it's nice and tight. And I have a little gap up here that I can see, but I can come back here, just stretch it over. We're good to go. All right, now that we've got two sheets up, I can see that these are kind of traveling apart. The great part about this being peel and stick is I can pull this bottom up here, scoot this over, and then get them both down that way so I'm not stretching this one too far, and that way they're kind of in their relaxed state. Even though this is vinyl, that'll make it stick longer. All right, guys, a couple tips with this stuff. This vinyl is super stretchy. You can distort it. You can ruin it really quickly, so be very careful with it. It's not like dealing with regular paper. Now, give yourself a day for a project like this. Take your time. It's going to look good. Pick the color you want, and if you want to change it later, it's going to be pretty easy. To get that popular farmhouse look, whitewashing wood can give you that vintage feel to a wood wall or wood trim. Let me show you a few ways to do it so that it looks real and gives you the look that you're trying to achieve. All right, guys, we had a great question in about whitewashing wood. You know, that farmhouse look is still really in. And I've got three different ways I'm going to show you how to do it because they've got all different results depending on your taste and style. 
First thing though, let's mix up some paint. Now you can go down to the hardware store and pick up your own whitewashing mixture, but you know something? I like making it the old school way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a measuring bucket like this. We're gonna mix two parts paint to one part water and mix it up really good. So let's do that. Get my stir stick over here. I'm just using a satin or a matte finish paint because I think it's really part of the look. So I'm going to go in here and what we're going to do is we're going to look right here for 16 ounces. There's our two parts. Set that out of the way. And then we're going to add in our one part water right here. Up to the next line. There we go. And we're just going to give this a really good mix because I want this to kind of dilute down. Now, there's some really cool tricks on how to do this, and it's depending on the wood that you're putting it on and what you're trying to do. I've seen people do two or three coats of paint and sand it and whitewash over the top. The one thing I don't want you to do, though, is ever prime it because then you lose that whitewash thing. So this is kind of that one time that you don't use the primer tips. Now, I've got three pieces of wood right here, and we're going to give three different techniques. One of them we're just going to paint on this one right here. And then two, there's a scraping technique over here that you can do as well. But there's a cool little trick that I want to do for that. Let me do that first. So what I like to do is I want to create, since I've got a white paint, I want to add a little highlight to it. So I'll just take the torch here and just kind of darken this a little bit. I want to bring that texture up in the wood. See here, we're not trying to burn anything. I'm just trying to darken that up so we get a little bit more highlight, especially with a lighter wood. I'm not trying to smoke us out by any means, but just give us a nice texture. You kind of see right there now, all of a sudden, if we compare those two together, you can kind of see that contrast, which is kind of cool. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put on the whitewash and this, and then I'll show you the difference kind of between these two. You want a nice wide brush. And we just want to kind of get it on here so it's a little translucent. And you just kind of want it to go in like that. If it gets too white, you can add a little more water, and that water will soak into the wood. You kind of see right there. That's kind of the look we're going for right there. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm going to add a little more water to this mix just because I think it can help us out. Depending how thick the paint is you start with, mix that up. Now another way to do this is to do it more with a scraper. And so what you can do is come on here like this, start to get our whitewash mixture on here. And then you can go over the top of this with a scraper. You can see what that does for us. It really kind of highlights the grain and gives us a kind of a cool texture. And that scraper is not a bad way to go, especially if you've got rough wood like this. And it's a really good way to go. Now, if we go the third way, this is a kind of a cool way. You take a candle, and I'm going to rub the candle across here to try to raise the grain a little bit. And that's also going to sit there. And that wax is going to push away the water, so it's going to keep that away from there. So what you want to do is come in like this, and really try to get this in here. Starting to get that flat, so that's how you can tell how much you're putting on. You're not going to see it. Just really try to get that rubbed in there. Pretty good flat spot right there. Don't want to put too much on, but let's give that a shot. And it should really make this grain pop because it's putting that wax on the very top of the grain where I was hitting it, which means the white's not going to really soak in much. One of the trick too is you can come in here if you're worried about a little bit off of that, you can come in and hit it real quick with a rag right there and just kind of rub that in. And you can see how that gives us a really good look. All right, and that gives us three completely different looks with the exact same 